Coming up on Fulton Today, Fulton County's Interim Health Director briefs the Board of Commissioners on the coronavirus. I'm Daryl Carver. The details are straight ahead. And later, it's game on for these Fulton County seniors. Details on how some of them say this activity is saving their lives. That and much more starts right now on Fulton Today. Welcome to Fulton. Today I'm Dante Carter in for Shania Chavis. As the coronavirus spreads across the country and has now made its way to Fulton County, Fulton leaders execute their plan to ensure the public safety. FGTV's Daryl Carver joins us now to explain. Dante, Fulton health officials are following the lead of their counterparts at the state and federal levels at the CDC, telling the public not to panic and take appropriate precautions to prevent being infected. By the time the news broke about the state's first cases of coronavirus from Georgia's governor and the state's Department of Public Health Commissioner, Fulton public health officials and county leaders had already begun meeting about COVID-19. Our main message, though, is for the citizens of Fulton County to remain calm, follow instructions, as we will be following instructions, and we'll be taking our cue from CDC and the state of Georgia. Since last week's press conference with Fulton County Chairman Rob Pitts, for the county's interim health director and county leaders, the focus has been to keep residents informed and at the ready at county health facilities. It's also why the Board of Commissioners received an update as well during their regular March board meeting. So here's what's going on now in terms of monitoring. Uh, we're watching travelers at the airport based on symptoms right now just from China and working with CDC and of course the State Department of Public Health. Um, hospitals are screening based on symptoms and collaborating with Public Health and CDC for those folks who have a high um, uh, risk for potentially being exposed. In other words, if you've traveled overseas and you are symptomatic, then the hospital will call the state and CDC and we would arrange for testing for those folks. The county's been in lockstep with the Department of Public Health's mission to assist in identifying any additional cases of coronavirus to reduce the spread and protect the general public. Several weeks ago, Fulton's Board of Health doctors began meeting with their own staffers to educate them on COVID-19 and the department's developing a plan of action. In the meantime, Fulton leaders are also reminding residents that influenza is still prevalent in the state as well, and county health centers are still offering the flu vaccine. We had 69 flu deaths already this year. 12 of those were in Fulton County alone. Um, we have a vaccine that's in development for COVID-19, but we have a vaccine, a flu shot, that is widely available that folks are not availing themselves of. As the country and the county continues to work to ensure health care providers and emergency personnel have resources to respond to COVID-19, officials offer the following advice for coronavirus or any respiratory illness. Wash your hands with soap and water or clean with sanitizer. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home when you are sick. Cough or sneeze into your elbow or use a tissue and then throw it away. Also, clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. While the Georgia Department of Public Health is the lead agency in this case, Fulton County leaders have also pledged their support in continuing efforts to keep the public safe. Reporting from Fulton County Government Center, I'm Daryl Carver for FGTV. Thanks, Daryl. Our other big story, week two of early voting in Fulton County. As we've been reporting, this is the first time Fulton voters are using the state's new voting machines. Overall, the first week proved to be successful at the over 30 county voting locations. Representative John Lewis cast his ballot on day one at the Fulton County Government Center. People should uh, come and test it out. The vote is, is precious. It is powerful, and we all must get out and vote like we never voted before. Uh, we live in a uh, representative democracy, so you know the way that we uh, are represented is to vote for our representatives. So I think it's important if you want your voice to be heard, you got to get out there and pick the person that you choose, and hopefully they get up to off to Washington and do what you want them to do. A number of voters on both ends of the county said the process was simple and efficient. Once you get into the voting, it was really great. 
Um, I mean, I just thought it was easy and I thought it was nice that you can see your vote confirmed on the piece of paper. Um, so I thought it went well. Early voting for the presidential preference primary and special election will take place weekdays through March 20th from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. There are also early voting opportunities this weekend and next week. Visit FultonElections.com for more information. Another major campaign is also taking center stage in Fulton County, and officials are hoping that everyone exercises their right to be counted. We're talking about the 2020 Census. FGTV's Regina Waller has details of the county's first ever We Count Summit. The We Count Summit kicked off on Saturday, February 29th at the Georgia Convention Center. In fact, more than 200 folks registered to come out to find out why it's important to be counted for the 2020 census. So As the countdown to April 1st, Census Day continues. Dozens crowded into the Georgia International Convention Center to get information on the importance of being counted in Fulton County. Our undercount in our community is a serious issue. Uh, we leave literally tens of millions of dollars in funding on the table every decade uh, because we have a serious undercount. Everything that we do as a city relies upon the census. We need to make sure that the people who are here are being counted because that means that we'll be able to have some of the things that we really want and deserve as a community, the things that we need. For the Fulton County Board of Commissioners and the City of College Park, the summit demonstrates the commitment to not only educate the public about the impact of the census, but to alleviate fears about the process. I know as a dentist, I work in an underserved community, and I know that we need extra funding. If we aren't counted, we're not going to get the funding that we need. So it's important for me to get trained, to pass it on to my patients, pass it on to my family and our community. Dr. Joy Fremont is one of the many participants hearing from a panel of experts about the push to make sure that everyone is counted. A message delivered by representatives from the African American, Latino, and Asian communities. You know, we recognize that 2010 was a big undercount, and it is important to our communities, the constituency, our people we serve, to make sure that we are counted so that the funding, the, uh, the resources, health, transportation, all of that, imp that impact our daily lives, we have done our part to make sure we are counted in, the, in all of those communities. Fulton County also reached out to entities such as V103 and MARTA to help get the word out about the 2020 census. It's not just about reaching out to one segment of the communities, but all segments of the communities. And to do that, you need to have faith leaders. You need to have people that can speak to millennials. You need to have people that can speak to those that are part of the have-nots, those that are veterans. So it's very good to be here and very good to see that, you know, Atlanta is on the job and they're, they're, they're stepping up and ready to make a complete and accurate count. This is just one of the many events planned prior to the April 1st deadline all in an effort to make sure that everyone is counted. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Regina Waller. Thank you, Regina. Juvenile Court holds trainings for the new Citizens Review Panel volunteers. The CRP, as they are called, works with volunteers to conduct legally mandated reviews of the status and welfare of children placed by juvenile court in the legal custody of the Department of Family and Children's Services. The training was held in juvenile court. The courts need help. Uh, with caseloads and to have other sets of eyes reviewing the cases uh, where judges have ordered things to take place to get permanency for children to have someone review that and give feedback back to the court so the court can make decisions in the best interest of the child. Now the goal is to ensure that reasonable efforts are being made to reunify the family or otherwise provide permanency for the child. I have actually volunteered in Fulton County juvenile court system for about 19 years now and Citizens Panel Review is the one uh, organization that I've never actively uh, been involved with mm -hmm. and now I'm ready to get my feet wet with uh, that process. It's a little bit different than some of the other things I've done in juvenile court and I'm just excited to be able to make a difference in just a different way. Court personnel say the CRP is an excellent opportunity to serve the community and make a positive difference in the life of a child. To learn more about the next volunteer opportunity with the court, call Nicole Kimball at 404-613-4667 or you can email her at nicole.kimball at fultoncountyga.gov.
Female inmates are recognized for graduating from a mental health stabilization program. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office marked the life-changing achievement by women at the South Jail Annex who completed the program. More than 20 other female inmates are currently in different levels of the three-phase initiative. These graduates will now be able to comprehend and contribute to their defense in the court system. And you could see the attitude and the atmosphere of the others that were in the class that this is working and this is something they want and this is something that will help them change their lives. The Women's Mental Health Stabilization Unit program is designed to address the acute needs of females incarcerated in the Fulton County Jail. The women participating are housed in a special pod with specially trained staff. When Fulton Today returns, a look at how one commissioner honors the memories of some of the nation's bravest is part of district by district coverage next. The dates are announced for the quarterly opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with one district commissioner and another commissioner pays their respects to some of our nation's very best. Here's Melissa Lewis with this week's District by District coverage. We began with District 1 Commissioner Liz Hausman and Commissioner Natalie Hall, who visited the Arlington National Cemetery in the nation's capital. The commissioners were in Washington, D.C. for the National Association of Counties annual conference. The commissioners wanted to pay respect to their fellow Americans who paid the ultimate price for their country. It was so moving. Um, when you walk through Arlington and you just see the magnitude of those that have sacrificed for our freedoms. And you walk up that hill and you watch the ceremony, the changing of the guard, and the reverence for the crowd. No one speaks. It's just so solemn and so moving. And then to have the honor of representing our, our state, to walk and, and put a wreath to honor those that we don't know who were there that have fallen to uh, save our freedoms. I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. I was honored to see my colleague, Commissioner Liz Hausman, actually lay that wreath with the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia. It's just, it was heartwarming to know that we have soldiers who literally, they're there 24 seven protecting that monument and protecting us in this world. And just to see that was a tremendous honor to me. Commissioner Joe Karn joined Commissioner Hausman as well this year at the NACO conference. NACO serves some 40,000 county elected officials. Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr. also attended the 2020 gathering of government representatives. Meanwhile, Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr. kicks off his quarterly town hall community meetings this week. The district dialogue sessions are all about Fulton County property tax exemptions. There are numerous exemptions that are available. Um, there are actually over 18 different um, exemptions, and that's just in Fulton County. Uh, each city also has a list of exemptions, but you must qualify for those exemptions uh, by April of each year. So that is the first line of defense uh, in making sure that you control your property tax bill, uh, qualifying for your homestead exemption. But there are also exemptions for, for disabled veterans. There are also exemptions, um, age exemptions, when you get to 65 and again at 70. So uh, we want to make sure that we inform the public uh, about all of the available property tax exemptions. There are two sessions this week at the Bowden Senior Center and the Bethlehem and Burdine Centers. Visit FultonCommission5.com for details. And once again, the deadline to file homestead and special tax exemptions is April 1st. 
You should visit FultonAssessor.org for more information on the process and available exemptions. For District by District coverage, I'm Melissa Lewis. Thanks, Melissa. Now you can catch more of your commissioners at work all this week on the Board of Commissioners meeting rebroadcast right here on FGTV. When Fulton Today returns, Fulton commissioners pause to recognize National Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. Fulton employees roll up their sleeves to save a life just in time for the March observance of Red Cross Month. FGTV's Douglas Bell has the story. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Bob. Thanks for your patience. It is a quarterly occurrence at the Fulton County Government Center. Yet blood drives are just one of the many critical services the American Red Cross provides each day. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Mack. But it's one way Fulton County employees say they know that they can help to save a life. I'm giving blood today because I know that uh, there's a lot of need for people who have uh, my type of blood and there's a lot of people that need uh, a lot of resources, especially with a lot of devastation that's been going on lately. So um, to give blood is, to me, is a good way to give back to uh, the community and to help out. I have a really rare blood type, which is AB positive. I believe like less than 5% of the population are AB positive, so I always try to donate and do my part. March is National Red Cross Month, a time when the charitable organization run by volunteers publicly restates its mission with the hope of gaining new supporters. From blood drives to CPR training and disaster recovery, assistance depends on the generosity of others. A lot of people don't associate giving blood with community service, but, but you're actually doing community service when you give blood as well because you're giving somebody an extra day, an extra year, decades more to be with their loved ones. So, you know, having your presence here and donating, especially during this time of our time of need, means a lot to us. Your superheroes, your contribution means a lot to the patients that are waiting. So we, we truly thank you. According to its mission statement, the American Red Cross prevents and alleviates human suffering in the face of emergencies by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors, even if the giving is simply one blood donation at a time. Dante, what many people may not realize is that the American Red Cross is one of the world's largest volunteer networks, represented in more than 200 countries. And Fulton County's partnership dates back more than 20 years. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Douglas Bell. Thank you, Douglas. Fulton Commissioners pause to recognize National Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. And does hereby proclaim March as Intellectual and Developmental Disability Awareness Month in Fulton County, Georgia. With staff and clients of the department flanked on each side, commissioners shared just how much the county is doing to serve this population. And I definitely thank our staff for their hard work, dedication, and commitment to ensure that our individuals served are included within this community. Prior to the proclamation presentation, clients who received the county support showed their appreciation by serving others and sharing their stories. Thank you for commissioners. Thank you for parents and staff. And love, I love the center. Now, the county has engaged two organizations to provide the services for the adults and children and adolescents. The providers are Chris 180 and Summit Counseling. To get more information about the behavioral health services, call 404-613-1053. And Fulton seniors got their blood pumping during a water volleyball match against another county. The Mills Ballers from the Helene S. Mills Senior Multipurpose Facility held a friendly competition against seniors from Beulah Baptist Family Life Center. Players on both teams say water volleyball is a fun way to stay both mentally and physically active. It gets us out of the house off of the sofa. I'm not a sedentary type of person and what the county tries to do is to have the, the Senior Olympics and intramural games like this to get people active because that's so important for our long-term health. Use it as a instrument of, of uh, exercise, you know, it just keeps me in good shape. Um, I really consider this water therapy. I love it. 
Water volleyball is just one of the many activities available at Fulton Senior Centers to keep participants engaged. Harvard School of Public Health researchers say seniors who have an active social life may have a slower rate of memory decline. To learn more about the activities available at Senior Centers, call the Starline at 404-613-6000. Up next on Fulton Today, the red and white hat is back for another year and children read across America. Stay with us. The Fulton County Employee Association organizes a college fair to help Fulton students learn about their higher education options. The event brought universities and colleges from all across the state to the government center. The students were able to visit with representatives at each booth to learn about the courses and unique offerings available at each campus. Well, it helps us with recruiting because Morehouse is literally in the backyard. We're right here in the heart of the city, so it's always good to make sure that we have that grassroots approach when it comes to recruiting, just to let people know and understand that we are here for them. We get a lot of students from the Fulton County um, coming to Fort Valley State University, so being here is a plus for us. We're really happy to be here and to really show our Wildcat pride. Most of the students who attended were juniors and seniors, and many already had an idea of what career field they wanted to pursue. And some Fulton County children take part in a national celebration of reading. The College Park Library celebrated Read Across America Day and Dr. Seuss's birthday with story time and crafts. The children listened to readings of Dr. Seuss's classics, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, and Green Eggs and Ham. There was also a visit from the Cat and the Hat. Read Across America is the nation's largest annual celebration of reading. Well, the children need to come in and uh, they need to come in into the library and read and also listen to others read. Mm -hmm. They need to become familiar with literacy, words, pictures. They also need to come to our programs. We have several different types of programs mm -hmm. focusing on literacy for children. Launched in 1998, Read Across America focuses on motivating children and teens to read year round. The Fulton County Library System has many programs for children and teens at all of the county branches. For more information on these programs, you can visit www.afpls.org. Before we go, our reminder that FGTV wants to connect with you online. Be sure to follow FGTV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for up-to-date Fulton County news. You can watch a replay of this show and other FGTV programming anytime on our YouTube channel, so please subscribe. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.